Well, it's been a while since I've done this coding thing. And yes, I did start a very ambitious mobile app project two months ago. And yes, I said it would be done by now. And yes, instead of coding, I spent way too much time this week playing Animal Crossing. So instead, I thought I'd get back into the swing of things with a tech-related video. And since I started coding nearly 10 years ago, I've been exposed to countless programming languages. In school, learning all these languages seemed like a means for our CS department to inflict pain on us. But besides resume boosting, which I know I'm guilty of, learning a wide array of languages is super helpful for either your job hunt, technical decision making, or building a product. So in today's video, I wanted to break down every single programming language I've learned and rank them. Back in 2011, I took my first CS class as a sophomore in high school, which was taught in Java. All I remember about this class were the tearful nights and nightmares over my final project. And if my CS career ended here, Java would definitely have gotten a solid F. But since I gave Java another try in college by taking data structures and setting it for my internship interviews, I started to warm up to it. Java is a comfortable, versatile language. It's a little old-fashioned syntactically, we've all learned the nuances of its object-oriented design, and it's not perfect, but it gets the job done. And now that the trauma of high school has subsided, I'd bump Java up to a solid B for basic. In my intro CS class in college, Python emerged as the easier, simpler, trendier alternative to Java. All the annoying things about Java, like figuring out interfaces, abstract classes, and lengthy syntax could all be thrown out the window. Python is probably the most readable programming language, and it strips away a lot of the complexity of programming that often overwhelms beginners. And of course, this comes with a cost. Programs written in Python tend to be slower and less optimized. But that's never gotten in my way, and is made up for with Python's universality for use in anything from machine learning, to scripting, to web development. So yeah, if you can't tell, I absolutely love Python, so I'll give it a shining S. Once I started warming up to CS, I took on a coding project at my research lab using MATLAB. Now, MATLAB is a language like R designed for scientific settings. It's capable of quite a bit like matrix manipulation, plotting data, and implementing data analysis algorithms. But for a regular old Joe, there's nothing special about MATLAB that you can't do with Python libraries like SciPy and Matplotlib. Plus, just to be super annoying, MATLAB starts array indices from 1. Who does that? So just for that, I give it a D. But with everything else, like the fact that it requires so much memory and is a paid software, it'll fall down to an F. Yikes. Now we've got C, which is the grandfather of modern programming languages and just about as old fashioned as it gets. I learned this language in a systems class where we studied things like interpreters, compilers, and operating systems. In theory, it is very interesting because of how low level it gets, but in its implementation, C is a huge pain in the butt. It makes you do all the hard work, like assign memory. But I do appreciate how powerful C can be, and despite all the pain it's caused, it kind of is a classic. And for that, I give it a C for the grade I got in that class. All right, now we're in the real resume booster territory with my senior year databases class. The main language we learned was SQL, or as some may say, SQL which stands for Structured Query Language. As the name implies, it's not really a programming language, but instead helps create, read, update, or delete data in a database. And as a full stack engineer, half my work included setting up tables, running queries for analysis, and writing migrations. Granted, I never explored NoSQL, but for all that I've worked on SQL itself, I really enjoyed it. And of course, there are areas of complexity that I still don't quite understand, but that's normal with almost anything. So I give SQL an A for how powerful it is and its ease of use. Well, this really is a no-brainer. Ha, never mind. So this is a scripting language designed to create dynamic web pages. And companies like WordPress still run PHP, so it can't be that horrible. But as evident by pretty much every single PHP meme on the internet, half the developer community universally hates this language. I think the real issue with PHP is its design and syntax, and how prone beginner developers can be to make mistakes with this language. At this point, it just seems like the world is moving farther and farther away from it, so for that, I give PHP a D. Now, HTML and I go way back. Again, this really isn't a traditional programming language, but instead is a markup language. What that means is that it marks up data within HTML tags, which define what will show up and how everything will look on a web page. This is something else that gets the job done and is pretty easy to learn and implement. There really isn't anything spectacular about HTML, but I also have no complaints about it. 
In school, I would have gotten a B plus slash A minus, but here we play nice, so I'll bump that up to an A. Now, CSS is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it can make our ugly duckling HTML generated web page look beautiful. But to get there, you have to finesse with this tricky, often irritating thing that is CSS. In theory, CSS should be very simple. You just call the appropriate HTML tag, ID, or class, and then define its properties. Seems easy, but somehow you can end up spending an hour just trying to figure out how to vertically align a div. So while I do appreciate CSS for how it makes things pretty, it can get incredibly messy. So this one gets a C. Now, this is an interesting one since at first I loathed JavaScript. But once I started working as a full stack engineer, which meant that I had to use React half the time, I realized the problem wasn't JavaScript as a whole, but rather relying on vanilla JS to create a full fledged application. So now I appreciate JavaScript for all it's capable of, whether it's on the client side with the help of frameworks like React and Meteor, or on the server side with Node. And now even mobile apps can be made using React Native. So for all that, I give JavaScript an A minus. Finally, the last language I learned in college was Racket, which is in the family of Lisp languages. This is a functional language that reads very differently from the others. Instead of the traditional syntax we're used to, everything here is written through S expressions, which are parenthesized lists. So whether it's a function call, initializing a list, or performing addition or Boolean operations, these are all done using this expression where the operation always comes first. Even though this is a pain to adjust to, I do appreciate the consistency that it enforces. Only after graduating did I realize that this language is super valuable to learn. It helped me appreciate how nuanced programming languages can be, and the theory behind how to write code that doesn't just pass without errors, but is actually efficient under the hood. And it gave me the skills to quickly pick up new languages since I finally understood the theory behind their design. So for all that, I give it a B plus. And those are all the languages I learned in school. While I don't use them much now besides maybe Python, studying these different languages helped me develop a more complete understanding behind a pretty critical part of computer science. But I know that not all of you will agree with this ranking, so go ahead and roast it in the comments down below. What do you think of my ratings? How would you change them? And whether you agreed or disagreed with my list, if you like this video, please give it a big like and subscribe. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.